Python and JavaScript are the two most popular programming languages in the world. But which one would I learn if I were to start over today? That is what we're talking about in this video. If there's anything that I've learned in tech is that things change fast. And there are trends that I've discovered as well as some massive job data from actual job postings around the world that could tip the balance in favor of one of these two languages today. But before we learn what these trends are and what this super interesting job data says, we first need to take a bit of a step back and understand what is the proper way to choose a programming language in general, starting from first principles. And then after that, we can talk about which one of these two languages is actually better for you. But before we get into that though, whichever one of these languages you end up picking, I want you to understand that there's one skill that you simply cannot ignore if you wanna take programming seriously. And that is gonna be data structures and algorithms. When I was learning data structures and algorithms myself, I was always really frustrated because all the resources would either go way too deep into theory that you just don't need, or they wouldn't teach enough to actually teach you the frameworks and like how to actually solve problems effectively. So throughout the past months, I have been working on a new course. It's called Algo University that teaches you all of this in the way that I wish I was taught when I was learning this myself. I spent so much time to like literally drill these topics down into the kind of format where anyone can understand this, even if you've struggled with them before, or if you've never even heard about data structures and algorithms before. So we go through everything you would need to solve actual interview problems and any company. So if you just go through the program and you just follow it like a robot, you will know everything about data structure and algorithms. So if you're interested in that and you're looking to take this seriously, you can go check that out down below in the description and you can use the code IMC for a limited time discount on the program. With that out of the way, let's get back into the video. So when I was first starting out with programming and I saw all these different programming languages, there's Python, there's JavaScript, there's Java, and like seemingly all of them seem to do the same thing. You can do most of the same things with all of the programming languages. So I've always asked myself like then why don't we just use one programming language? Why do we need all this programming language? And this is still a common question that beginners ask me today. But really what it comes down to is very simple. So if you imagine that you're in a workshop and you see all these different tools around you. You see hammers for hammering nails, you see screwdrivers for screws, and you see a saw for cutting wood. So just as you wouldn't use a hammer to cut a piece of wood, or you wouldn't use a saw to hammer down a nail, different tools are used for different purposes. You could do it, you could just keep hammering down the wood and it would sort of break eventually, but it wouldn't be as precise as doing it with a saw. And you could keep hammering the nail with your saw, but that just wouldn't be very optimal because these different tools are more optimal for different purposes while they could technically be used for a lot of different things. And it's sort of the same thing with programming languages. When we talk about different programming languages, at the end of the day, all of them can do pretty much the same things, but some of them have been built with certain tasks in mind and certain programming languages are just more optimized to do certain things whereas others are more optimized for other things and that is really what it comes down to so when you're thinking of what programming language to pick there's really two things that matter number one is what kind of projects are you interested in building and then number two is how much job demand is there for those kinds of projects and that programming language. And really, if we go even deeper, what it comes down to is what problems are you interested in solving with code and how much demand is there for those problems to be solved in the job market. And so the way you choose a programming language is not to start looking at the programming languages, but rather you start looking at the types of projects you're interested in building, that's what there is demand for. And then you reverse engineer which languages are most optimized for those types of projects. And this gets us into why Python and JavaScript are specifically so popular today. It's because the problems that these programming languages are optimized to solve are very much in demand in the market today. But before we get into the differences between these two languages and what types of problems they are meant to solve, one thing to understand is that really, once you learn one programming language well, you will be able to learn any other language very, very quickly. Because at the end of the day, the logic of programming is really the same between any programming language. It's just that the syntactical details and exactly how you write a loop or define a function and things like this are just going to be slightly different. So I wouldn't worry too much about what you pick. And certainly if you've already started learning one, just stick to that one language because once you get reasonably confident, you'll be able to pick up any language very quickly. Like in my first job as a software engineer, I had to use Java in my job because our project was based in Java. I had never coded in Java before in my life, but I was able to learn Java in just 14 days. In fact, I made this video about it if you wanna see it for exactly how I did that. 
And really, this isn't just some like weird flex about how I was able to learn a programming language in 40 days. It, no, it's really to illustrate the fact that once you know some programming languages well, or even one language well, you can pick up any other very quickly. So now, before we go into the job data of the actual objective data on the demand for these languages, let's talk about the differences between the two. So first, let's talk about Python. So when you think about coding in Python, really, you should be thinking about data related slash backend related projects. So anything related to data science, data analysis, AI, machine learning or backend development, that is really where Python is going to shine. And the reason why Python is so popular in these areas is because the way Python was created was to make programming as fast as possible. Well, some of the older languages like C were more focused on the speed of execution. So the speed of actually running the code, Python was specifically made to be focused on the speed of development. So to make the process of writing the code as easy and as English-like as possible. For example, here's some code in C on how to access and open up a file. There's all these lines of code that you have to do just to do this simple operation. Whereas in Python, we just have this one line where you can do the same thing. Now, if you run these two sets of code, the C code is probably going to be much faster. But in many cases, especially in these like data slash so backend related things, it's much more important to be able to write the code quickly. And we don't really care about these very minute like millisecond level differences in the speed of execution. So in these kinds of things, Python really shines. So that's just for you to understand where Python came about and why it is so popular today. So the things you can do with Python are things like automation scripts or like dealing with the operating system on your computer. I think about building the infrastructure so that the back end side of a web application rather than the front facing or the front end side of the application. If you're interested in this kind of more logical work where you're dealing with data and infrastructure and things like this, then Python could be the right choice for you. And on the job side, unless you've been living under a rock, you would be aware that there is now a massive trend towards specifically using AI, using data, or all these kinds of things. So in that front as well, I see Python becoming more and more popular going forward. So certainly if you pick Python, you absolutely cannot go wrong. Okay, so that is Python. Let's now talk about JavaScript. So JavaScript is sort of the king of the web and specifically the front end side of the web. Whereas with Python, you're usually going to be focused on more of the behind the scenes logical side of programming. With JavaScript, you're most likely going to be dealing with the front facing. So the actual visual components of a website. And when you learn JavaScript and when you learn front end development, you'll also be learning other languages like HTML and CSS because HTML, CSS and JavaScript are what together make up the front end of the website. And the kinds of problems you'll be thinking about are like, how does the website look? Like, where does the button go? Like, where do the different widgets go? When is there going to be like a pop up like these annoying ad pop up? You can probably see on many websites or the ads that pop up on these YouTube videos. Those are most likely going to be programmed in JavaScript. But nowadays, JavaScript is not just about the front end because with the creation of something called Node.js, which is like a JavaScript runtime that allows JavaScript to be written also in the back end, you can actually build full stack websites, meaning both the back end, so that's the infrastructure side that I was talking about earlier, plus the front end just in JavaScript. And this is super, super powerful because it means that just with knowing one language, you can now build an entire web application from scratch. And that is why if you're specifically interested in the web and you just want to focus on web development, building web apps, then usually JavaScript is going to be the best choice because it's just very efficient to just be able to use one language for both sides of the web. However, if the thing that you're going to be building on the back end side is going to be dealing with a lot of data and it's going to be more like data science -y, sort of AI related stuff going on behind the scenes and still probably Python for the back end is going to be better. So it's really going to depend and there really isn't like a right or wrong answer here. But in general, if you really just want to go for web development, I would go with JavaScript. So let's finally talk about some numbers. So both of these languages are largely popular because they're very easy to write. And you might think like, okay, if they're easy to write, then that means that there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be able to learn them, which means there's going to be a lot of competition. And that is true. But if you look at these numbers here from this guy who essentially scrapes more than 14 million developer jobs, we can see that in terms of the numbers, both of these languages are going to be at the top in terms of the number of job opportunities. So sure, the supply of developers for these languages are probably going to be higher because these are very easy to learn and very beginning learning languages, but also the demand for them is going to be super, super high because precisely because of the fact that these are very popular, a lot of companies are going to choose to build their applications in these languages because they know that they have the widest number of developers available 
to them to hire. So then the real question is going to be what is going to be the ratio between demand and supply for these languages versus other ones like you can see here. And while that is the key question, it is unfortunately extremely difficult to answer. What we could look at to sort of try to get this is this 2023 developer survey from Stack Overflow, which is by the way, a super important report. I'll leave it down below if you want to read it through. We can see that out of all respondents, 63% say they're coding in JavaScript, 49% say they're coding in Python. Whereas if we compare to something like Java, we can see that roughly double the amount of people are using Python and or JavaScript versus Java. Whereas with the job demand numbers, we can see that Python has 600,000 jobs, whereas Java has 546,000 jobs. So only like maybe one fifth more jobs are available or even double for JavaScript. So we could use this to say that still, even when you consider the additional supply of developers in these languages, it's still going to be easier for you to get a job in either Python or JavaScript versus some of the other languages. Now, which one of these two languages then is better? Well, we can see actually that JavaScript has 900,000 jobs, whereas Python has 600,000 jobs. So more than 50% more. But we also see that the JavaScript is going to have 63, the Python is going to have roughly one fifth more developers using it. So if we think about specifically which language based on the numbers objectively, all of the things being equal would give you the best chance of getting a job as fast as possible, you could say that JavaScript takes the edge. However, if we go into top paying technologies that show the average salaries for different programming languages, we can see that Python is going to come out at 78,333, whereas JavaScript is going to come all the way down at $72,000. So Python overall is apparently paying slightly more than JavaScript. So we could spend an hour here like speculating about all the numbers and things like this, but really both of these are going to be excellent languages for getting hired for making money with code, building all sorts of cool things. Really, it doesn't matter too much. Really, as a conclusion, you just want to ask yourself, what do you want to build? What are you excited to build? And which one of these two languages is going to make it easier for you to build that thing? The reason I personally love Python, why still to me, it is the number one language, despite the fact that JavaScript apparently has slightly more jobs, is that because Python is so versatile. And as a beginner, if you're like me, when I started learning programming, there were so many cool things that I wanted to build, like I wanted to build automatic stuff, I wanted to build websites, I wanted to build games, I wanted to do AI, I wanted to do all of these things. And Python allows you to do all of this, whereas JavaScript is just purely for web development. So simply because of the versatility, I still recommend it as a beginner language and it's going to make it the easiest for you to learn programming as fast as possible. And like I said before, once you just learn the foundations of programming, you can pick up any programming language at any point you want. So it really doesn't matter too much. Just go and learn any language, just start building stuff. And at the end of the day, what company care about is do you have the logic of programming in your brain? Do you know how to think like a programmer? Do you know how to solve real problems with code? If you know how to do those things, it doesn't really matter what language you've coded in. Really your first language is just going to inform what kinds of projects are you going to be building for your very first programming resume. So now that we have all this context out of the way, you might be asking yourself like, okay, Thomas, how do I know what kind of project I should build? What does it even mean to build a great programming resume project? If you're wondering that, then what I recommend you do is watch this video next, where we continue from this by building out five really impressive resume projects. I go through the aspects that make a resume project impressive in the first place. And then I give you exact ideas that you can just go and copy paste. If you just build those things, you know, you're going to have an impressive resume. So go and continue from this right now by watching this video right here.